Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck with me, Frank Baltiers, where step-by-step, step, we take an empty trailer, as you see behind me, well, it's not empty anymore, but we convert it into a full mobile kitchen on wheels that you can take straight to your health department to get inspected. And this is uh, everything that has worked for me and my food trucks and everything step-by-step. Step. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Also, if you don't feel safe doing the work that we're about to do next, which is the propane lines, make sure that you hire a professional if you feel like you didn't do it just right. Um, but this is exactly what I've done in mine and it's worked perfectly because they do not require a licensed plumber or electrician to do the work. I am a licensed electrician, but they don't require like a plumber for the gas lines or for the, for the plumbing lines. So let's get started right away. Let me tell you exactly the materials that you'll need. All right, so in today's video, we're working on the propane lines. And what you'll need is three quarter inch black piping and fittings. We're gonna be making a contraption like this, which is kind of like your main artery that all your propane lines feed off of there. You're also gonna need some Blue Monster. Um, this one is a thread sealant. It's like a liquid. We also have tape that you can use. And this is the one that I use. It's my propane regulator changeover. It handles about 345,000 BTUs. It's pretty nice. It's always sold out for some reason right now. So I have about three of them that I bought just to have extras. Uh, what else do we need? Mm. Oh, we need this flexible gas line right here. I bought a whole roll of it. It's three quarter. Uh, it's a 25 footer. I bought that one at Home Depot because I like the one there and they have all the fittings that I need and I haven't had any issues from there. So it's a three quarter inch roll, 25 foot from Home Depot. And you're gonna need like all the fittings that go with it. You're gonna need like this. And also, let me look real quick. Where are they? Ah. Anyways, they have like little fittings that are like male fittings. Oh, like this. Home Flex, these fittings like this. So you're gonna need those as well. It's a male one. So make sure that you buy all these. Uh, this next part is a little bit more on the pricey side because all the gas fittings are, are very expensive for some reason. So make sure that you take enough money to the store to buy everything. So again, let's get started. Just wanna tell you what the materials that you'll need for this particular setup because we're gonna be finishing up our gas lines right over there. So let's get started. Again, drop any questions in the comments. Again, this is a very important part. Everything that we do is very important, but this one's even more because it's gonna feed your cooking equipment and it's where almost all the flames are gonna be and you wanna make sure that you don't have any leaks and um, you don't get any propane smells in your trailer. So let's get started. Frank Baltiers on how to build your food truck step by step. So what we wanna do next is take an inventory so we can get all these gas piping fittings and also like the preset ones that come in certain lengths. Uh, they're all three quarter inches and all this gets fed out right here to the trailer. And particularly mine goes to two 30 pound tanks to a propane changeover regulator. Because if one uh, tank runs out, I can always switch over to the other one. Mine has, a, as I said, two 30 pounders. You can have a hundred pounder, you can have two twenties, two forties, whatever you want. But this is where it exits out to the trailer. So right here, right here I have a 90. This one is three quarter inch by 24 inches long. And as, as I said, these are all black piping used for gas. In this case, be liquid propane. I have two 45 degree fittings right there with a close nipple. And this one is, let's see, 12 inches long. So I have a three quarter by 12 inches. I have an, another 90 degree. I have this one right here, which is six inches long. And then it has a shut off gas valve. You don't have to put this one in there if you don't want to. I just did it for safety, but you technically don't have to do that. And then I have another 90 degree right there. And then this little piece is three inches long and it goes into a union. As you can see, there's a union because uh, it's um, this one's gonna get put on for from the fire suppression system company. That's what they required for me. And it's easy to be able to use a union there so you can kind of fit this, or if this goes bad, you can take it off without having to mess with all this stuff over here. So that's the three quarter inch union. Again, with the close nipple over here, it has a, I believe it's a one inch nipple. Yeah, it's a one inch nipple with another union. And then it has another 90 degree. However, this one is different than like this one right here. As you can see, the end is a little bit different. This one actually goes into the union. 
um, and this one gets close into the nipple. So it has a nipple with a T, and then another nipple with a T, and then that one goes into my uh, flexible gas lines, as you can see right there, which were, those go to the appliances. So another T, another T, and then this one is the same as this one. I don't know the particular name for that, just know that it's not a 90 like this. It's still a 90, just one end is different than the other, as you can see there. And all this gets um, threaded right here with the Blue Monster, the thread sealant tape. This one's not tape, but kind of like a liquid. So there you go. There's a review of what we need to get now so we can make this. And then these right here, are these little shutoffs, three quarter inch shutoffs, they're about $10 a piece, just so you know. And then the three quarter inch flex line. I got this one from Home Depot. I like Home Depot's uh, flex lines that they have. I haven't tried anybody else's, but these have given me no leaks. The connectors work nice and it's pretty easy to use. So that one I did not get from Amazon. I know they sell it on Amazon, but I picked it up from Home Depot. Uh, 25 foot roll is kind of what you would need for a trailer like this. So there you go, one more review. We'll start from the beginning. And there you go, that's what we need. And that's what we're gonna be working on. And that'll be the end of the construction of the trailer and everything else is equipment, fire suppression system stuff, uh, prep sandwich table, and we'll go over all those things. But the major stuff for the truck build will be done. Very nice. Hopefully you guys are keeping up with the build and you can do it yourself on your trailer and you get the same success and you're up and running ASAP. Something that you'll need for this part of the gas piping the installation. I haven't used it on my other installs of my trailers, but it came in handy this one. I found this old vice grip and typically you'd have it like on a table or something. I just put my foot right there and so far it worked nice and you're gonna need like these monkey wrenches right there. I got one and I got a little baby one right there. And then there's our little contraption that I built to be able to uh, get all my flexible gas lines right there. So it works out really nice. It's a really cool thing that I saw in another food truck that I keep using because I think it's a really nice apparatus to have everything in one shot right there. Almost like a central point that you can use for everything uh, everywhere, left and right. Well, here's a final product, kind of-ish, <laughs> of the piece of three-quarter inch black pipe that's gonna go to the outside to feed the liquid propane tanks. That's one part, and then we're gonna kinda just dry fit it right in here, and it's gonna go outside on that hole that we drilled, kinda like that. Let me try to fix that just so it can go out. Ah, two seconds, hold on. There it is, just needed a quick adjustment. And so here, we're able to use this and then put it outside. And that's gonna feed to the propane changeover. And then this stays right there. And it's gonna go over to the fire suppression box right here, the control box. So let's see how it looks outside really quick. Make sure that we have everything done. At the end, obviously, we're gonna give it a propane test to make sure that it works. But for now, we can't do that because we don't have any propane lines connected to it. But let's go outside. How all this looks. So let's finish it up. There it is right there. Not too shabby, not too shabby. It's right there. There is where our propane regulator changeover uh, is gonna go. Made by, oh, I forgot what the company is. I got a Fairway, Fairview or something like that. But that's where it's gonna go right there. And then the two propane pigtails, one for this tank, and then the other one that I gotta buy still, but it's gonna go right there. And that's how it looks on the outside. So there's a dry fit. So this is that propane changeover regulator. It handles about 345,000 BTUs. The model number is GR9984, made by uh, Fairview, I believe. Fairview propane regulator. And then this is that three quarter to three eighths um, nipple reducer that we have here, the 90. And then I'm gonna use this little 3 8 two inch, which is gonna go right there. And then right here, you're gonna have two pigtails that come out to the propane tanks. So we're gonna put this together right now. I have to go buy a new uh, K 
can of this right here so I could finish up this part. And then we're gonna put that fire uh, box, control box, and we're done with our propane for now until they come put the fire suppression system, which they reschedule me till Tuesday. So Tuesday is when they're gonna come put the rest of their stuff right there. And to attach the propane regulator to the truck, there is a bracket that's really important called Z mounting bracket. Just looks like that, almost like a Z. And this goes in the back on these two holes right there of the regulator. Super important to have this because then you don't have any other way to attach it to your truck or your trailer. So make sure you order this is separate. It's a few bucks, but it is a very, very important part of the propane regulator. I actually have another one extra right there in case I were to need it down the road, make sure that I have an extra one. So this is that piece attached it together right there. Now we're ready to mount it on the truck. So after we have this kind of dry set in there, it's not 100% installed. What I'm gonna do next is I have to 90 into a box right there, but that's gonna be the fire suppression control valve that goes there, almost like a shutoff that's gonna go up to the suppression system. We can work on the part that goes after that, which is right here. It's gonna come from a union, and then we're gonna 90 down. This is gonna to go to the propane water heater. This one's gonna to go to, uh, it could be any equipment, let's say it's a fryer. And then we're gonna do another one that's gonna to go to a griddle, and then another one that's gonna to go to a burner. And that's gonna take care of our equipment right there. And then we're gonna come this way a little bit and put, um, these shutoffs right here, these ball valves for the gas valve, what's it called? Brass gas valve. And there's gonna be almost like a shutoff there that we have for a emergency situation, or if you didn't wanna you know, turn off the gas for that equipment at that particular moment, we're gonna have that as another safety precaution that I like to use there. And then from here, it's gonna be a flexible three quarter inch gas line. So that's what we're working on next, just getting all these parts ready. I don't know if I like these right here. I might go with the close ones. This one is uh, an inch and a half, I believe. Yeah, inch and a half. And I don't know if I like them. I like the close ones because it makes this really big. So we'll see. But for now, that's what it is. That's what we're working on. And I just went to go pick up the little piece that goes to the fire suppression system. Almost like they call it the gate valve, the mechanical gate valve. And it's gonna go right there. So I couldn't finish that up until I picked this up. One thing that you wanna keep in mind, just like the water pump, it has an in and it has an out. So you gotta make sure that this comes in from your propane tanks, being my 230 pound tanks that are gonna be right there. So this is gonna be facing right there on the inside and then out is going obviously out to our equipment where that part is gonna be right there, our little contraption that we made. So just keep that in mind, don't forget, make sure that you put the ins and the outs in the right spot. So on here, you're gonna need almost like a little bit of a gap. As you can see here, this won't fit flush against the wall, so you need to extend it. So you can use this, an extension box, a 1900 electrical box extension, and then that'll fit right there and that'll give you enough clearance so you can secure it. You can see it kind of pops it out. So then this will be secured to the wall, the stainless steel right there. And then this will get secured to this red fire uh, control box that you have there. So this is what I use every single time, an extension box. As you can see, it's not a regular 1900 box, but it's an extension box, an extension ring almost that you use right there. It's an inch and a half uh, deep. What I did on here with my little Sharpie is I marked the line right there where that screw's gonna go and then another line right there. And this was gonna hold up that, uh, that box. And I'm gonna drill it with my drill bits right there. Just kinda wanted to show you the step-by-step, -step, literally. So you take this and you mark it, and then you're gonna have to drill those out right there and right there. And those are gonna be almost like your little pilot holes that are gonna hold that box up.